Hey everyone and welcome to the sixth video of this series. Uh, right now what we're going to do is create some prefabs for ourselves. So this is a, a Bolt prefab, Bolt specific prefabs. Um, we're going to create a new game object in our scene, set it at zero, and we're going to make this super simple. We're going to create a capsule, I know very original, and uh, we're going to put it up a little more so that uh, it's on the root and we're gonna call it the player entity now I know it's uh, super crazy that we have such a complex entity but I think you guys are smart enough to handle it so we're gonna go ahead and add a bolt entity script on it and bolt entity script is what controls uh, its ability to be instantiated across the network. So we saw in the last video the Bolt Network Instantiate call and we saw the Bolt Prefabs um, static um, class name and what controls um, those things, what, what, what kind of prefabs are allowed to be instantiated uh, are ones with Bolt Entity on it. And in the past um, they had a separate serializer class but in this last 0.4 update, they've done a really, really cool job of, of uh, putting the serializer into the Bolt entity so it's more automatic. So we defined our Bolt um, state entity state with a few of these properties on it. And what we're going to do is in the serializer, it, we're going to select I entity state. So each Bolt entity can have one state. Or can come from one type of state and I think it might be dynamic so you might be able to change it on the fly I'm not sure but um, we define our different states that we want you could have multiple and then we pick which one this entity has in here and uh, something I'll show you right now which is actually really really cool f new feature is the inheritance of states so this could be a player state and it can inherit from entity state but also have uh, you know a string or uh, yeah we'll say string name but it might be in user ID or you know any variety of different we'll say 25 replicate we want to replicate the state so our player state can have this extra property that it, and you can have you know base um, states and then if we compile then we should see player state soon. Did it compile? Wow, I got rid of the name somehow. Player entity. There we go, so we can add the player state instead. Uh, so that's just a quick thing I wanted to show you guys. And then we're gonna drag this prefab into the window. And you'll see it, it doesn't really like this. Um, we need to compile it. So Bolt gives you two compiling options, all or code only and all has to do with compiling these prefabs. Code only will basically just take these and turn them into code. Um, and it's a lot faster than using all, which will look through all your assets and find one prefabs with bolt entity and um, basically uh, spend a lot of time. Like if you have a thousand different prefabs, it could take a while. So if you're just changing in a property, then just use uh, code only. But we want this property, or we want this prefab to be able to be used in our code. So we run the all command, compile all, and we're going to go back to our server event listener and we're going to try and instantiate this. So we're going to get rid of this and now our player entity is compiled and if you saw my IntelliSense you would see that it has a static string. Can we take a look? Static read only prefab ID player entity. So it's not a string but it's close to that. And then what we're going to do is say entity take control. And this is a very um, bolt specific thing. So uh, th only the instantiator of the object is considered the owner. And the owner has a final say on all of its state. So control is a separate but also needed idea and control is the one who can send commands for input to and from the server and um, it feels like a controller might be an owner but it's not um, it's fully authoritative so even if a client connects and you give them control of a, of a new prefab that you've instantiated um, they're still sending the requests 
to you. So you can create a fully authoritative game where there's no cheating, there's no clients allowed to say where they move, it's all strictly controlled. And uh, we're just going to implement the client side as well. So public override void scene remote scene load remote done. And um, so this passes in a bolt connection connection. I'm just going to say con. And that's like that's like a, another client, right? Um, if the scene load local done, if the scene is locally loaded, you're the you're the server, right? So you don't need to know your own. You don't have your own connection, but in this case, um, this is a client. So what we can do for the client is say var entity. We'll say the same thing as what we did up here. We want to instantiate a, um, a prefab of the player entity for them, and then we'll say entity give control. Uh, assign control. It used to be give control, so I apologize. Assign control <coughs> to the connection. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's all we need, actually, to um, to uh, to um, instantiate our entities. But there's one more thing we want to do, and we want to do it for both the server and the client, which is configure the state of our entity. And for that, we will do var state equals player entity, oh, sorry, entity get state i player state. So here you can see the previous player state that we created on the, um, ooh, it's, ah, yes, still part of i entity state. Um, the entity state has the health and the speed, and it's even created this vitals class that has um, all these different floats. And you also see they have a, a modifier. And that's what we need to use here to modify the state. So uh, state is read only um, from the state, from the actual state object. So you have your health, health, you have your speed, you have your transform. Um, those are all read only. And the way we modify them is a little bit strange, but uh, it enables some good things, so I'll, I'm going with it. But what you need to do is st state uh, modify. And this gives you a modify object, which is kind of like a clone of the state, and you change that. And once you're done using it, it'll just apply it for you. So mod name will be player. And the mod speed will be, uh, say, 8. Uh, float 8. Those are like the really the only things. We could set the mod health uh, but I think you need you need your own modifier. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, yes. It's a little bit goofy to to um, sorry about this. Never, I've never modified a struct before, but it doesn't look like you can say mod health current. That's read only. So you need to create a sub modifier of some kind. And um, something else to note is that whatever you don't use, Bolt is smart enough, so if we just left this blank regen, Bolt is smart enough to only serialize and, and worry about things that are um, used. So if you have an item and you have a bunch of different properties like fire damage, uh, ice damage, if you just use one of those properties, that's the only property getting serialized across the network. It's, it's really efficient um, and you don't really have to worry about creating a lot of properties. And okay, let's see. And that also has to do with arrays. That's something I didn't show yet. Compiling. Uh, but okay, well, we'll finish this. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. If we configure the entity mode before we assign control. Um, 
So what that'll do is it uh, it'll um, make our entity and give it to whoever we need to give it to, whether it's this or this. And it'll set up its uh, speed and health to really simply. All those other properties that we added, we don't even worry about them. They're not being serialized. You only use what you need to use. So let's see what happens. Um, my inspector's being a bit weird. Very weird. Oh, we'll get rid of this prefab. Oh, there we go. Very laggy. Not sure what's going on. There we go. So we loaded the map, and then um, we have a clone of our player entity prefab. And we can see here in the inspector, it's really, really cool. Um, we've got all of our state just as um, displayed in the inspector. So we've got speed, uh, we've got the name, we've got the health, and uh, everything there is replicated nicely. And we, s we would see if a client connected, it'll also make one for it. Uh, but that's going to come much later. So. Um, for now, uh, we're going to take a break here, and uh, in the next video, I think we're going to try and get to the player controller and move this guy around a little bit. Okay, ciao.